What's up guys and welcome to a terrain tutorial. Hey folks, I'm Top Table Steve and today I'm going to be running through a board build with you. Um, it's for the third scenario in the Scarring of the Shire source book uh, for Middle Earth Strikes Battle Game. But it can be used in any sort of fantasy battle game skirmish. You could do it on any scale, so it could be a mass battle or you could do it smaller and just have it as an armour display board. Whichever you think is suits your needs. We're going to keep it nice and simple, um, similar to the stuff that we've done before. So I think what we'll do, um, we'll get the camera pointing down at the table and I'll show you where we're starting and where we're going to go from there. Right guys, as you can see, we have two two by two boards made up. These are going to be pushed together, which are going to make a four by two, uh, so they can be used um, for smaller games with two by two tiles, uh, for like battle companies or something like that. Or they can be put together like this, or sometimes in a four to make a four by four to have a full scale battle on. In this instance, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be four by two made up from two tiles, and I'll get a picture of the map that we're going to emulate up now. Cool. So yeah, basically, quickly just go through it. We've got a six mil ply on the bottom of the board, um, and then around the edge of that, we have fixed 25 mil batten all the way around, and then one across the middle. Filled the inserts with standard insulation foam polystyrene, which you can get from any DIY store, the cheap stuff. And that's the base of our board. We're going to be building on top of that. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put one board to one side. I will be building these uh, together, but. For camera, I'll concentrate on one board. Uh, I'll just make it be sort of easier for you guys to take it in. So, let's crack on. Right, folks, so as you can see, we've got our board. We've got a couple of different offcuts of polystyrene. Uh, normally, if I was doing like hills and stuff, I'd use some of the cheap stuff. But as you can see from the map and the way that this uh, board's going to lay out, it's quite a flat board, this one. Um, but I just want to make it interesting by putting a few undulations. So I've got some... 45 mil styrofoam and some 10 mil styrofoam. I'm going to start placing that around the board now. I'll cut that up using my hot wire cutter um, and then we'll come back in a second and show you what I'm up to. Okay, so we've got a couple of small hills, got one larger one for this corner, and then just one that slightly brings the level up a little bit here. That's as much as I'm going to do on this board. Uh, what we're now going to do is uh, stick these down, um, and to do that, we are going to use cocktail sticks and gator glue. As you can see, we get a pencil, mark out on the base layer where the piece is going to sit. And stick cocktail sticks in. Get some of the glue. And to activate this, some water. that on, put a weight on top, get it squared up with the edge of the board, and we're cooking. And then we do the same with this. And then we're going to leave that to set about half an hour. We'll see you in a second. Cool, so now the glue's dry. We'll remove any uh, cocktail stick heads that we could see sticking out and use them at a later date. Now, what we're going to do is come in with some heat. I'm going to use creme brulee heat, heat sort of, uh, I can't 
can't remember what they're called, like a little blowtorch thing. You can use a very hot air gun, you know, you can use different things, whatever you're more comfortable with. Make sure you're in a well ventilated space. And what we're going to do is we're just going to heat up and kind of melt the top surface of the foam and that creates nice wavy effects rather than have it boring and flat. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're not getting the desired effect that I want with that. It's not hot enough, it's running out of gas. So I'm gonna come in with a hot air gun and we're gonna do the, pretty much the exact same thing. So I'll crack on with that now. Okay, so I think we've distorted that um, board enough. Now what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out any um, sort of discrepancies we've got. Like we've now got a step here. Because of the different densities of the foam, they, they melt and uh, shrink at different rates. So we're now going to come in with some um, sculpt, sculptor mold, modeling compound, whichever you like to use. And we're going to smooth out everything and get it just looking nice and neat. Ooh. Modeling compound, sculptor mold is mixed, always the same two parts uh, material to one part water. So we will pop those in a mixing bucket. Pop the water in. And we'll get mixing. And I'm gonna mix this by hand. Again, always making sure you get rid of all the lumps. Once it's ready, I'm gonna start whacking it on. And I always start placing it at the bottom of any big hills or steps. Get them blended in first and work from there. So that is the board covered. What we're now going to do is we're going to start to let it dry a little bit and as it's drying I'm just going to be smoothing it. See this part in the middle, can you see how as it starts to dry I can get a nice smooth finish. We don't mind the odd lump but we don't want to be able to see the texture of the material. If that makes sense, like the fibres, because um, that'll look silly. And also around the edges of the board you want to keep it straight you don't want anything overhanging so we just make sure that we haven't got any overhangs we keep that nice and smooth and don't worry about if there's some edges of the board that are not completely covered at this stage because that will help when we're blending the two boards together so we'll just make sure there's no overhang and we're going to smooth it all off so i'll speed the camera up and we'll do that now So that is drying nice and smooth. I'm gonna, these bits are still a little bit wet. I'm gonna let them dry a little bit more and just start smoothing them out. And then we'll come back to a few hours when that's all dry. Okay, so what I'm just gonna show you here quickly while this is drying is how to blend the two boards together. Put your two boards up. And you just blend it in. you're happy with the blend it's simply a case of pulling it apart and smoothing the edge easy as that because once they're both dry before we flock them you pop it back together and you just want a sanding block along to get the neat, neat edge. So that's it. I'm going to finish uh, sculpt molding this board and then we'll come back and carry on with this one. 
So both boards are nearly dry now. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this one to one side. This is going to be the one that I'm not going to show the build because it's pretty boring. It's just got a few trees on it. Um, this is going to be the more exciting of the two. And this is Farmer Maggot's uh, fields. And what I've done here guys is laid out some masking tape that gives me a rough idea where the bushes are going to be, then laid out some 10mm foam, and as you can see, I'm just tapering the edges which are going to be the top of the bushes. I was very careful to make sure these bushes are not taller than hobbits, because I don't want hobbits to have to take a climb test. And once you've done this on all your bushes, it's time to move on to the next phase. And as we can see here now guys, all we're doing is we are sticking all these bushes down so we're dry fitting them first. A couple of um, cocktail sticks to hold them in place and the trusty gator glue. We'll do the trick. Push them onto the cocktail sticks. And the job is a good one. We'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So from this point now, we're just gonna bulk out our bushes a little bit. And to do that, we're gonna be hitting back with the sculptor mold. And we are gonna be covering all the bush areas. No puns, thank you very much. With sculptor mold. And the idea here is to hide, we don't want any bare foam. Um, and we don't, we don't want to bulk it out too much, we just want to make a nice structure so I think the best way to do this is as you can see just whacking it on and then working with it after so we'll do one row at a time um, and get it how we want it. So let's speed things up and I'll come back once I've got this to the rough shape that I need it to be. So that is all the uh, hedges and bushes covered. What we're going to do, we're going to start to let that dry. As it's drying, similar to what we did with the base, we're going to be like smoothing it off, taking away any rough edges. We want to leave it, we don't want it too smooth um, because we're going to sort of fix our uh, foliage material to make the bushes to it. So we want it to adhere quite well with the glue, but we don't want you know, daft chunks of sculptor mould sticking out everywhere. If you do get any on the base again, um, around where you've been putting it on, don't worry, you can just smooth it out as you did previously. So, I'm gonna to start to let that dry, and uh, smooth it out, and then we'll come back once that step is complete. So as you can see guys, I've laid down an overall sort of base colour of my uh, mud, soil, earthy colour that, that I use, that uses bog standard. Um, all I'm going to do here, you can leave it like that before you move on to the next stage, but what I want to do is where the hedges are, I'm just, I've mixed the same colour with a little bit of black in, just to darken it up. And I'm just going to make the um, bush area and where I put the sculptor mould a touch darker. Because um, I just think if you, can, if you see through when we flock it, it's just a little bit too light if that makes sense because if it inside a bush would be uh, dark and shaded so we're going to touch all that up so it's a little bit darker and stands out a little bit more and then we'll move on
There we go, I'm happy with that. Uh, we'll let that dry off and move on. So guys, as you can see, I've made a little bit more progress on the farmer's field. Uh, I've done the main one in the center here, and I've started on this one here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you exactly how I've done what I've done. They're still wet, so then they've not got the desired effect that I want yet, and there has a little bit of finishing off to do. So um, I'll take you through these steps now, just to, we don't want the whole board looking too similar. The other board that's got the trees on is gonna be basically grass trees and it's going to be fairly plain this one we want to be a little bit more visually uh, enticing so we're going to break up the green uh, put some uh, farmers fields that have already been farmed uh, that's what the impression of this one is that it's, it's already been uh, it's, it's had all the vegetable patches and everything taken out um, and it's got remnants of what's left on there so that's like muddy and bits of uh, debris and things like that over here we've got some uh, running vegetable patches uh, mounds which we're going to address uh, in a second and the way that I've done that was um, he's just put some lines of brown silicon using a silicon gun um, to recreate the uh, effect of crop lines and then I've put on over some scatter which is also over here which is this mix here which is a mix of a bit of everything really in there there is soil, some brown tile grout, and some different pigment colours, some blacks and greys. Um, and it's basically, there's no science to that, it's whatever whatever you've got lying around. Um, and it's just, you're kind of make, making your own flock, it's not a flock because it's got tile grout in it. We're going to spray it with really watered down PVA and water and it'll set rock solid um, and it'll keep its its shape and its texture, so that, that's all that is. So I've still got this one, this side, and this side to do. This side here is gonna be the side that joins onto the other board. So we're not gonna do anything here. This is just gonna be grass, and we'll flock that when we flock the other board. We'll flock them together so that the tie-in is seamless and the colors all matching and everything like that. So, let's crack on. What we'll do is we're gonna, we'll start off with this segment here, and I'm just gonna get it so you get a bit more in shot. It's a smaller area, it's going to be easier for me to uh, describe what I'm doing. Pop that off, don't worry about the white showing through, that's fine. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to get a smallish brush. We're going to get a 50 50 um, mix of PVA and water, and we're just going to coat the ground area in that mixture, like so. Don't worry about being too neat. I mean, if you can avoid getting it on what's going to be the bushes, great, but if you get some of the PVA on and some of the covering, it's fine because we're going to be covering it with the, uh, the bush itself anyway. But if you, if you can keep it neat, it's good practice to try and keep neat. So we've got a nice coating of PVA on there. I'll pop my brush in a cup of water. All we're going to do then is get our mix and literally as easy as this we're going to sprinkle it on. And as you can see it's got a texture to it which is what we're after. It gives a really natural look. This is a great technique which I've seen Luke use and Luke Tawan. So on top of that what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this which is basically ground up uh, dried leaves. Uh, but you can use anything that you've got. You could actually go into your herbs and spices cupboard and use uh, basil or uh, oregano as long as you don't mind your uh, board smelling that way. And this will give the effect of um, old sort of vegetative debris. This looks really cool, I think. So we're going to get that on there. I'm then going to come in with some dark green um, sponge flock. And we're just going to sparingly sprinkle that on. 
and if, it will go down in, in bits of clumps and if you can just try and avoid it and if it does go down just grab it out and break it up there you go and then a lighter sponge foliage uh, this I'm using coarse turf uh, from Woodland Scenics for this and again you can sprinkle this or what you can do you can pop it into a sieve and sieve it through and again we're just making the colour a little bit different than the field next to it we want that contrast that's basically the plan with this nice and fine and we may put some clumps on at some point put that back in there and then we'll give that a blast with some isopropanol don't worry about it moving your scatter around because it will happen it's part and parcel and all we've got to do when that happens is come back in with some more we could just leave it, it's not the end of the world if I'm totally honest gives it a more natural um, windswept effect if nothing else there we go that's looking awesome I'm liking how it's turning out already just like I say I just want it to look different shade to the field next to it that's cool and then what we're going to do we're going to get a very watered down mix of PVA and water and we're going to Spray that on from up above. If you get too close, this will blow your coverings uh, all over the place. Uh, and this watered down PVA will darken your soil mix. Make everything dies. It will dry a little bit lighter. But we're just going to give that a good covering like that. So I'm happy with that. And I think what I will do is I think I will add some clumps of the lighter. Um, turf along the bushes and in the corners and things like that as if the wind's just blown all the dried up bits of foliage into the corners and the way we get that stuck down is again we give it another blast with ISO and then I'll use a bottle like this like a dropper bottle I'll just drop the water down PVA directly onto the coarse turf because the ISO is soaked straight in and when that dries it'll be nice and hard and stay exactly where I want it so as you can see I've got a slight contrast don't know how well it's showing out on the camera but it looks good here in the uh, workshop um, so that is one side on this side where I've pretty much done the exact same thing I'll just move the board again so in this corner as you can see I'll try and get a better shot of that actually so yeah in this corner I've got the um, I don't know what they're called they're called harvest lines or something like that and all I'm gonna do is um, I am gonna pop some glue Reach over and grab it. Some PVA. Oh, blobs like this. On the lines. And then I get some grass tufts, which I've been making at home. And I'll do another video on how I make the grass tufts. Very easy. I'm going to pop these on. These could be different types of vegetable. Grow, oh, growing in a nice neat row and that's looking good I'll go along with the rows I'll leave some missing as if cheeky hobbits have stolen them um, and yeah I'll do that now
And there we go. There's our vegetable patch there, uh, ready to be harvested. Obviously with some missing cabbages that have been stolen. Um, so I need to do this side now, and I think on this side we'll do something a little bit different. So in this area, what I want to do is have nice, some nice lush grass. So it's not going to be the flock, it's not going to mix the different variances, it's going to be a well-kept kind of grass. Um, so I'll show you how I do that now. So again, we're going to coat that area in um, mildly watered down PVA. And we're going to keep this as neat as possible in the lines. And we're not going to be shy with this either. Um, we want a bit on there. Okay, make sure every area is wet and covered. Brilliant. And I'm going to be using my flip locks to do this. Um, really, really nice piece of kit. If you want to see a review on it, check out Luke's channel, he did a review on it. Um, a really good review actually, because he compares it to another type of flat box. I'm going to be using uh, Summer Blend 6ml grass for this. So we will pop some in our sieve. Make sure the flat box is on, which it is. and start getting the grass down. And there we are guys, some nice lush grass. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just going to mix it up. I'll do, if you want to see more, I'm going to do this one slightly different again. If you want to see more tutorials on how to do different types of ground cover, I can do it. I'm not going to spend this video doing multiple different things. Um, but yeah, so we're going to let that dry and then we'll come back onto the next step. So now what we're going to quickly do, as you can see, I've covered most of the segments now except for this one. Uh, we're going to flock the entire other board and this segment so that it matches through. And we do that the, used, the, the normal way, the way I've shown in the last video. Um, again, if you'd like to see a video solely on flocking and how I flock, please comment below. So I will get on with this now. That's the main area of the boards covered. What we'll do is we'll come back with tufts and things like that and dress them a little bit more, make them look a little bit more realistic. And then we'll place the trees on this one. Uh, but we're gonna concentrate on this board. I'm gonna show you how to make these uh, borders look like bushes. So that's the next stage. So as we can see, it's really, really taking shape. I've got the two boards together. Uh, all that's missing off this side really is the trees, which we'll come to. And as you can see, I've started to do work on the bushes. Now the bushes are fairly straightforward. I've shown you how to put together the main form of the bushes. And I've done a little test piece here, as you can see. Um, and basically all I've done is I've undercoated those in a dark brown, like you've seen me do on uh, those. Um, I've then put on some uh, tufts and also some flock. So what I'll do is I'll show you in more detail how to create this on a, on a smaller piece like this. And all you do is you transfer it to um, your board on a bigger scale, as you can see. So we'll get on to that now. So here's an example of how I make these bushes. Um, basically, as you can see from the bottom example is a completed piece. And then on the top is an incomplete piece. It's 10 mil thick foam you can use whatever you like I've shaped mine sort of rounded at the top again you can do this however you like so I think let's get into how this look is achieved so we take our 10 mil piece of foam uh, like I said earlier I've undercoated it in brown just for any bits that show through it looks a little bit more natural 
what we're going to do is we're going to stick clump foliage over the top and we're going to put that on quite sporadically we're not going to be any sort of rhyme or reason as to where we put it just what looks most natural um, and then from there once that's stuck on we'll sprinkle the um, flock once the flock's on it all comes together so as you can see I've stuck the clump foliage on here and what we want to do from this point is we want to start going in between the flocks with some watered down PVA so the PVA in place what we need to do now is get our modeling flock together whichever color is desired I'll be using the uh, mixed greens uh, from Woodland Scenics which is great I'll get into a little container and I'll sprinkle just over the PVA and I'm not worried here about getting the flock over the clump foliage because there's no PVA on it it won't stick and you can just tap it off so you don't have to try and be really neat and get around the clump foliage etc um, you're just getting it on there as best you can um, the colors that this creates for me with using the mixed greens um, it blends everything in. and you will get green fingers by the way as, as I did. So we're going to tap the excess off um, and that's what we end up with. And it looks great. I, I really like how these are looking. I still think I can uh, make it better and advance in the techniques of making these bushes but I needed a solid structure for these boards. As you can see you can add as much or as little uh, clump foliage as you like. Uh, there's quite a lot on this example but you'll see from the boards I'm a little bit more sporadic with it. Um, and that's it. Very easy, very quick and very effective for a gaming board. Wouldn't suit a diorama, but for a gaming board, it's perfect. Once you've done that, get some watered down PVA over everything, some isopropanol. It'll keep everything in place and harden everything up, especially these tufts. And that's it, guys. And here's the finished bushes on the board, guys, with a little bit of detail, uh, with a scarecrow and the pumpkins put into the center field, just, just for added bit of uh, realism and uh, sort of just to immerse you into that it is a farmer's field um, this looks great with miniatures on I've been posting pictures up on the Facebook group um, and I'm really excited to get playing on it and film the scenario from the uh, Scar the Shire book one of the main sort of things that jump out at you on this board is the fact that um, each segment on either side of the bush is different uh, aesthetically it's very pleasing um, you've got the normal grassland uh, to the, the south of the board and then on the uh, north, east and west and in each corner uh, you've got different, it varies from lush green grass to uh, dried grass to um, vegetable patches and such um, and from here we can go on to the other board which I completed as well which is just a very basic board with a small wood on and um, yeah I can show you in a future video how I've done these trees they, I didn't spend as much time on them as I would have liked to have done um, but trees are something I do want to do a video on at some point these were done sort of a, in a quick and nasty method if you like but um, they're very effective I think they look quite cool um, very uh, middle earth looking and um, I think they do the trick so yeah that's the board in all its glory um, look forward to it in a battle report thanks for watching along guys uh, don't forget to check out all the links uh, below the Patreon. It really, really helps us. We have an affiliate link with Element Games for all your toys and stuff like that. Um, the Facebook group links in there, the Instagram and Twitter links, etc. Um, yeah, and I'll see you all, guys, all you guys soon. Take care.